Hey guys, this is David Strauss from S Stoppers, and we're about to have a race. Here in front of me is a brand new editing computer that we are going to put up against our computers from 2015 and 2017. Let's go. Old computer failed again. The second old computer, almost halfway done, still room for failure. And the new computer is finishing up at 24 plus minutes. Now obviously you might expect our brand new editing PC to crush our eight year old one in an export race, which is fair. But it begs the question, when is it time for a new PC? What kind of computer do you get for different kinds of editing? Do you build one or do you buy one? Well, in this video, I hope to answer those questions in a way that will apply to your specific situation. Let's start with the reason we got this new computer. Over the last couple years, I've started to notice little lag times with our older computers here in the F-Stopper's office. When I was in Lightroom, when I was moving from image to image, it would just be fractions of a second, but I seem to notice, especially with the growing file sizes with high resolution cameras, just incrementally longer load times between each image. And then in Premiere, especially in one of our newest tutorial releases with Elia Licardi, Photographing the World Japan, when I was editing those projects, especially when I was exporting, I had export failures over and over and over again. Failed again. And it added up between that and the Lightroom time to hours and hours of just lost time over the course of my month. Now, if you're a casual editor, be it photos or video, a little bit of weight really doesn't affect your life that much. But if editing is your livelihood, if it's part of your business, then any time wasted in front of the computer is literally costing you money. So if that's you and your computer is slowing down your workflow, it might be time for an upgrade. Now, when it comes to a new computer, do you build or do you buy a pre-built one? Well, Lee over the years has built a couple computers for the F-Stopper's office, and he's filmed the videos, they're on YouTube, you can check those out, I'll link them in the description below. But it really isn't that difficult of a process. As a test though, as I was browsing around for this computer, which I did end up buying from VRLA Tech, I did a price match between this base model, which is about $3,000, and all the individual components which they do list on their website. I did a quick search online to see if I could buy all these components a lot cheaper separately and then build it myself. I was expecting maybe I could save at least, I don't know, 20% off that $3,000 value. But to my surprise, the difference in price was only a couple hundred dollars. And I didn't dig deep enough to see if that included any shipping costs, so that might be a factor as well. Now, saving a couple hundred dollars can be a lot to some people, and I don't want to discount that. But here's why I chose not to build this computer. If you factor in finding all the parts online, doing the research to make sure everything's compatible, learning how to actually build the computer if you don't know how to do that already, and then spending the time actually building the machine, that adds up to a lot of time. Not only that, but if I were to end up messing up something in the actual build process or if a computer part just went bad, that's on me. If you choose to go with a professional team to build your computer, like VRLA Tech, they have guaranteed build quality, they have guaranteed shipping, and they have a one year warranty on all their computers. I also know that even after a year, if you get in touch with VRLA Tech, they will help you solve a problem, you just may have to pay for some parts. Now to me, the value of that security far exceeds $200. But if you wanna save a little bit of money, you can still build your own PC, check out the links below. So whether you buy a pre-built PC or you build one yourself, what kind of computer do you get? Well, that depends on what kind of editor you are. Are you doing photos, video, just a little bit, a lot? There's no one good value computer that will fit everyone's workload. If you're a photo editor and you only edit a few jobs here and there, then buying a beast of a computer is going to be a waste of money. But if editing is part of your livelihood and, or a significant part of your workload, then skimping out on a PC is going to end up costing you a lot of time. So to help understand what you might need a little bit better, let's talk about the base computer components that will go into any editing computer, and then I'll make some specific computer recommendations that should match just about any profile of editor. Now there are four main computer components that will affect your workload. Let's talk about the first one, and that is your CPU. Your CPU is basically the brains of your computer, and the power of it will determine how fast you can complete any given task. Now to be honest, almost any new CPU these days has the power to run Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop, and Premiere pretty well, although some might be a little bit slower than others. There are two main brands of CPUs that you're probably gonna choose between Intel and AMD. AMD CPUs tend to be a little bit cheaper, but Intel CPUs actually handle Adobe products a little bit better. So if you're the occasional editor, I might suggest going with an AMD 5000 series or better, but if you spend a little more time editing, I would suggest going with an Intel CPU. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it'll probably run your programs a little bit more efficiently. 
Now the next part you're going to want to pay attention to is your RAM. RAM is basically the short term memory of your computer and it starts to affect your workload when you start adding lots of layers or effects on an image or video. The more you add, the more RAM you'll need. Now for a basic photo editor, you could probably get away with 16 gigabytes of RAM. With 32, you'll edit any photos and basic video, and with 64 gigabytes, you should be set for a while. Next up is your GPU. Your GPU or graphics card is kind of like one core of a CPU that focuses a lot of energy on a single task. It affects anything visual with your computer, so monitors, or especially if you're in Premiere and you're adding lots of footage and trying to play back everything, the smoother that playback should be. Now, if you just edit photos, Lightroom and Photoshop, they don't really utilize your GPU that much, so you don't really need to pay that much attention to it. Adobe has started adding GPU accelerated tasks, so if you're a serious user, you don't want to discount it completely. But if you're a video editor, you definitely want to pay attention to your graphics card. I would suggest a video editor look at the NVIDIA 3060 Ti as a base level graphics card or find something that performs similarly. If you are working in After Effects or any 3D rendering programs, you probably want to upgrade to the NVIDIA 4000 series as that's going to really optimize your workflow. Now the final component we'll discuss, which is usually the most familiar, is your storage device. Whatever you do, do not get a hard drive, a hard disk drive for your computer. Hard drives are the old school way of doing things and include a physically spinning component that limits the speed of how fast your computer can access files. If your hard drive is working slow and you're accessing your files slowly, that's going to be the holdup point of your entire computer. It doesn't matter how good your other components are. Do yourself a favor and make sure to get a solid state drive. They are a little bit more expensive, but they are much faster than it will save you a headache down the road. Now you can always buy cheaper, larger, external hard drives just for storage, but I wouldn't suggest working off those hard drives. Make sure what's built into your computer is an SSD. I have personally found the sweet spot for my in-computer storage device to be at least one terabyte. I tend to bring a lot of files onto my computer, get the project done as quickly as possible, and then export it onto some other device for backup. Now, depending on your workload or workflow, you could definitely go larger or smaller than that. It's really up to you. So those are the four computer components that are going to affect any editing workflow. But how does that play into your specific situation? Well, I'm guessing anyone watching this video is probably going to fall into one of three categories. So let's build out some computers for your specific workflow. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we got this computer from VRLA Tech, and I'm gonna be using some of their builds as examples to match different editing profiles. One thing I really appreciate about their site is they have a ton of variety and you have the ability to customize your build. You can modify components from their base builds and build out the exact computer that will fit what you need. Now, you'll notice a lot of their PCs are labeled as gaming PCs, like this one, but gaming PCs will work just fine for editing as well. And in my opinion, gaming PCs have a lot cooler cases, so why not add some flair to your office? Now, the first editing profile I'm going to talk about is the casual amateur photographer. You run through a few edits per week in programs like Lightroom or Photoshop. You don't really plan on ramping up your workload or taking this as a serious business. You do not need a high-end PC just for editing. And if you spend money on one just for editing, you're gonna be wasting your money. Something like the Spark Gaming PC would probably be a good fit for you. The AMD Ryzen 5000 series works really well for Lightroom. You've got plenty of RAM, a small SSD, and the graphics card, which you don't really need a good one for editing photos, is built in. This PC is only 650 bucks, but you really don't need to be spending more than that unless you plan on ramping up your editing workload. The next editor I'm going to talk about is a person who's probably running a small business or is taking photography or video a lot more seriously. You are spending more than a few hours a week in Lightroom or Photoshop or Premiere. You are probably going to want a computer like the Titan Gaming PC. I would personally modify the CPU to an Intel Core i5 as Intel's processors tend to be a little bit better for heavy Photoshop edits. This PC is built out for gamers, so unless you're a gamer, you can probably downgrade the graphics card to a 3070, especially if you're editing video. If you are a photo editor and don't plan to touch video, you might wanna shoot their customer support an email to see if you can downgrade to anything even cheaper or just stick with 3070 because who knows, you might end up getting into video or who knows what the future updates of Adobe, Lightroom, Photoshop might change and maybe a 3070 could come in handy in the future. The final profile we'll talk about is the heavy editor. 
Editing makes up a significant portion of your business workflow. You're probably spending 10 to 15, maybe more hours per week editing in front of the computer. Any time lost to computer lag is literally costing your business money. This editing profile fits me, and again, is the reason we got this new computer. So if you're in a heavy editing situation like me, keep things as fast and efficient as possible as it will literally save your business money over time. I chose to go with the Helios Gaming PC, but you should probably also consider the AMD Ryzen Workstation, as they have pretty similar specs, except for the graphics card, which can be customized. Again, if you're editing video, you should probably go with at least a 3070. I happen to go all out with my graphics card on this PC because I also happen to be a gamer, so it helps with both video and gaming. Again, if you're editing just photos, you could probably stick with the built-in option for the AMD Ryzen workstation. Now, one of those three computer recommendations should be a good value fit for almost any editor. If you want more detailed specs on the components that go into each one, check out my f-stoppers post. It'll be linked below. So if you guys have any questions about VRLA Tech products or how you can customize your build, they have a great FAQ page and have a great customer support team. I am really happy with my build since we got it. I have probably seen a 25% increase or more in productivity, specifically in my culling. I have also not had a single Premiere project fail on this computer so far. Fingers crossed that keeps up. This has been an amazing machine so far and it's also been really nice for gaming if you are a gamer. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe or head over to fstoppers.com where we have daily articles on photography and video or head over to fstoppers.com slash stored where you can dive in deep to any genre of photography with some of the best photographers in the industry. Until next time, happy editing.